Join us, MrTruck.com, for truck reviews, trade reviews, and accessory reviews. Well, it's Mr. Truck and Chuck with another review. This is the 2021 Tacoma 4x4 Trail, I think is part of the name of it. But anyway, we're pulling uh, 6,100 pounds. It's rated to 6,400 pounds. So we're trying to keep everything close to the edge so we can get a really good review of how this is going to climb in the mountains and how well it handles a trailer. I've got a, uh, a uh, Kurt Echo brake controller on the rear of the truck which is just a plug and plug in the truck's reciprocal and you plug in your trailer to the back of that and you use your phone or your foot pedal. It works really cool. So we're playing with that up here because this truck didn't come with that. 2021 and this has a 3.5 V8 six-speed automatic. What's the power rate? 278, 265. Really? Good yeah. job, Chuck, because... All right. Yes, <laughs> Torque be hard. Cool. So we're up here in the Rockies. We're right by the big Thompson River. Head toward Estes, so come along and enjoy the scenery and see what we learn about this Tacoma. It's got some cool accessories we'll show you too. It's got these new boxes in the back, kind of like a Ram box, but different. Okay, so we'll see you on the trail. Well, we're heading up out of this, whatever this place is called. It's really close up by the river. It's some kind of a, a stop place. Round Mountain Trail, I guess is what it is. And we're in this SR5 four wheel drive double cab, double cub. 4x4. Four four. That part's running fine. So today we're trying to do the, the trader chest. We're not really going to do any rock climbing with it. I'll do that with the, the uh, TDR and a TDR Pro. But anyway, it's towing this trader well. We've done a few switchbacks and a little bit of grades. And, you know, it's got enough power. It's not, you know, like a dynamo. But because uh, we're about maxed out on what it can do capacity-wise of the trader payload so it's doing well this trader is just a flatbed 22 footer and it's eight and a half feet wide so it's wide but because it's a flatbed you can see where the fender wells and even these these mirrors do well actually they shoot out to the side far enough I can see when I'm going around corners which is surprising usually you need a spotter mirror convex to do that but I've actually turned the corner several times and I watched the tail end of the trader go around and not run over the curb that's what your goal is but anyway, wow, we could have went on the Round Mountain Trail. You know, there's a lot of these rivers out here. You can still go out and mine them for, you know, whatever they call that, prospecting for oh, gold. Yeah. yeah. I was on Clear Creek the other day. It was a Cripple Creek. Anyway, they gave you all the rules and how to do it and what you could and couldn't do. But oh, it's gorgeous up here in the mountains and it's cooler. But now, what are we showing? We're showing. 86 degrees, which I guess is better than 90, which is what we've been into, 90s and 100s, but it's August. It's usually the hottest month of the year. I bet back home it's 90 something. Let's see, do I have, yep, I've got the ECT power, electronically controlled transmission, power button, wrapping up my RPMs, going downhill. Handling's good, I know it's got a front rear anti swag I've got the weight distributing hitch on this Gen Y hitch. And it's all doing fine. No problems at all turning corners or handling the curves. Always a lot of switchbacks and curves on the way to Estes, no matter which way you go. There's about three roads that go to Estes. We gotta go up there sometime and go over the trail ridge. But the snow is still six feet deep up there. Yeah, the problem with that right now, too, you got to set up an appointment to go through the National Park. Oh, that's right, you do. you got to go, yeah, that's weird. And, you know, we got that problem with Glenwood Canyon and the mudslides, you know, now because there's no trees, they got all burnt off. So that's causing the mud to slide clear down the river and block the roads. It's been terrible this summer. But now think about it this winter, there's just stubs sticking up up there. There's no trees, there's no bushes. So what's going to hold the snow? I wish I knew what gear. I mean, this is a six-speed. 3,000 RPM just scooting right along. So I don't know, I think you know, at this altitude we're probably at least 8,000 feet. And so, you know, it means the air is thinner, we don't have a turbo, and it seems to be doing fine. So I think they got this rated, I don't think I'd want to tow more than 6,400 pounds with it. I think the leader in the class is the Ranger at 75, which seems like on the high end. But uh, yeah, these have been around a long time. These Tacomas are, you know, 
they're they're pricey for a reason people really like them they're loyal to them and they usually last and last I, I run with a lot of people that you know used to come as the forerunners for off-roading and you know they don't spend all their time working on them. that's those razor guys those Polaris razors that spend all their time working on their rigs I don't do anything on my Hondas either we're pulling a Honda Pioneer side-by-side -side on my flatbed my tilt trailer that's what got us up to that 6,100 pounds. So it's trying to haul closer to the maximum capacity. Don't go away, Mr. Chuck.TV. We'll be right back. <laughs> looky, looky, these cool storage boxes on this Tacoma. These are so cool. You got a push button, they lockable. You swing them open here. And it says all this, well, it's got some room. It's got a fender well in there, so you only got some room. It's got a bunch of room back in the corners. And that's cool. It's lockable. It's got a gasket on it, so it's fairly, probably fairly weatherproof. But, uh, you know, you lose a bunch of the fender. But you can put tools in there and, you know, bottles of water and all that stuff. It's got cup holders on top. But this is really kind of cool. Well, the problem I have is on the floor, they are only 33 inches between them, which means I can't put a four-wheeler back here. Because usually my small one will slide in there without this on it, and my big ones will go up over the fender well and front tires. So I like to haul ATVs in the back of these Tacomas. But this is a new storage thing. Came out, it's got little cup holders. And then you still got the cleats for tying something down back here on the rail, which is really good. And, okay. Then the bed, this is one of those plastic beds, bicarbonate, whatever it is, more of a plastic. If you can see in there, there's a 110 outlet in the bed. I'm really starting to like these on vehicles. My truck doesn't have it, but I think it's kind of cool to be able to plug stuff in back here. Do that tailgate party. I like tailgate parties. They're fun, tailgate parties, you know, Broncos, those kind of things. Okay, all the normal stuff, the light controls are over here on the left side of the steering wheel. Sway control and your automatic headlights. And your cargo light. Okay, in the center stack, I got it set on the PSI so I make sure that I didn't overload anything. That shows my tire pressure in the truck. Nice set of gauges, nothing but tack. And speed and temperature and fuel. In the middle, navigation. There, it got cleared down to 13.5. Towing the trailer, it was like a 14.5. Going up, coming down, we lost something there. And there's the lane change setting and how far the radar detects vehicles in front of you. Yeah, it's lane change. Yeah, 91 degrees. It's getting toasty. There's a metal stack. You got your home, your menu, your map, your power volume. Nice screen. It's a touch screen. And there it tells your fan speed and uh, your mode for where the air is going to go up or down. I actually like the individual climate controls left and right. That's your fan speed. Down there, your USB, your rear sliding window, the uh, one that beeps at you when you're trying to park or back up. And there's the electronic computer control transmission. Electronic computer control transmission. ET, ECT. There's your shifter, and we had it in sport mode. Once in a while, and shifted it manually a couple times. But yeah, that's a nice size console. The cup holders in the back. Grandkids all fit in here well. It's kind of hard to squeeze an adult in the back. You got to get the front people to move forward to get their legs in. Because it's mostly made for children back there, from my opinion. But it's a, it's a good looking truck. It did squat more than I wanted it to. So we, you know, without anti sway bars, we probably would have squatted four inches. As it was, we squatted just under three. Yep, here's my Kurt Echo. Isn't that cool? It's a little green line underneath the lid that shows you it's plugged in and working. And it all straps on there to the door of the brake controller, which holds it in place. That's good. Snaps on right there. You got the light, tells you what's going on. And that's how it works. It's all plugged in here. And it gives me trailer brakes. I'll show you in the cab what it looks like on my phone. The thing I want to do is take a picture of my tire pressure monitor. Now that Chuck's done yakking, this here is the tire pressure monitoring from Tucson. I use this every time I pull the trailer. 
It tells you the air pressure, tells you the heat, and all four tires. I love it! Okay, Chuck, what were you whining about the phone? Pick the phone up and show it to me. What is this? Okay, that is Echo from Kurt. That is, I just showed people on the back that plugs in your trader uh, connection and connects everything to your truck and everything works fine. It's got green light tells you, but that is your brake controller. Now you push that button and hit, that's your emergency. It's tied into your truck, so whenever you put your foot brake, it actually will break the trailer. All right. But that's your emergency button there. I'm not done talking, but he just got rid of the phone. So anyway, so that's if you were to be on a swerve, that tip it up so you can see the glare. There you go. Thank it, you. I, now, I, need to, I, I need to do my seatbelt. Do you mind if I do no, my seatbelt? No, no, no. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not in the air yet. We're not moving yet? No. Well, I'm trying to move the seatbelt. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, anyway. So that is your brake. Or that, you know, if you have an emergency situation where you want to just brake your trailer, not your truck, that's the button you push. But it's a big red button. And then that'll just hit the trailer brakes, and that's so good. I literally like this. Actually, I'm very surprised how much I like this from Kurt. It's the Echo System. The Echo System. Hey, Chuck's Push pushing it. my button. Yeah, it's an ECT power. That's electronic control transmission. And then up here in the dash, it turns green, so you know there it is. You so now we're ready for towing trailers. Oh, okay, we'll leave it on. Yeah, we'll leave it on because that's what that's made for is for trailer towing or climbing or whatever. I'm, I'm Chuck had a good question. He wanted to know if this ECT Chuck asked me if the ECT would work with the manual shift. So I thought, oh. <laughs> so I figured at least it'd be a warning light, but I'm in ECT and I'm doing manually shifting. And it's not giving me warnings, it's not telling me when to shift. So I guess I'll just shift whenever I darn well please. That was fifth. Because, you know, it's nice, like what you were saying, when you're in the mountains towing a trailer, and if you want to control, like a lot of the mountain people, if you do that, they manually shift, yeah. even their automatics. So you can do them both. You can manually shift and keep the electronic control transmission running. I thought maybe it would give you some shifting ideas and when to shift or that, but it doesn't really do it. And red light is not to over 6,000 RPM, so I can't count on doing that. that would be a little too hot. thing to tell good gear I mean I wish they all had that all the time this is the one time I use it for most vehicles other than like Ram or Ford the rest of them only use them when you're manually shifting but I always want to know what gear I'm in I'm going about 2100 rpms through some switchbacks and this puppy is taking the curves really well Do you feel like you're driving a Lamborghini and you can <laughs> manually shift <laughs> you shift down oh it jumped up to 3500 rpm Oh, we're flying right by Carter Lake. Zoom, zoom. I'm going to shift up again. Go down here. Whoop, look at that. Drop down to 2,500 RPM. Look at all the razors on there, man. Yeah, they got a cool. big tonner pulling up. Yeah, we're in horse country now. Yeah, this Tacoma is fun. I mean, this is a cool off road truck, too, that I always enjoy. But, you know, it's not bad for towing smaller traders, which is what it's designed for. We gotta go raft them while we're up here. I've seen some tubes. Rafters. Hell, these board bicycles are so close to the line. Yeah, swing that wide. Uh, miss all the three bicycles. feet doesn't work out very well. No. Are you supposed to stay three feet from them? Yep. Well, that's good to know. I like shifting, man. I'm having fun with this thing. It's got a sport mode, too. Use up all my gas. <laughs> Is it notice? Does it set something about your fuel economy on that too? Well, it tells me how many miles to empty, kind of thing. Oh yeah, oh, it does. Okay. It does. We looked at that earlier, and what was it? I, I was getting like twenty. Well, fourteen something. Yeah, is what fourteen you're something with a trader on it, and that was kind of going uphill. And I got uh, it was uh, was it twelve? I wrote it down. It was twelve and a half without. It was twenty-two point three. I got empty without a trader, without a load. Which is, is decent. Some It'd be horses. nice if you'd have that show up and you can tell when you're doing the manual shifting if it's well, like it helping you or hurting yeah, you. Yeah, a lot yeah. of those those mile per gallon sensors and gauges will tell you something soon. This one I couldn't figure out how to set it back to zero. But it was, every time I drove it did recalculate itself and gave me that reading. And usually the only time you can do that is if you push the 
reset button it goes back to zero and for that run that's what you got well this one seems to do it every time i turn it off and on but i haven't got it to where i can read something instantly that would tell me how much has changed you know for the next five miles right unless i shut it off so and i guess too if you're on. buying them to tow a trailer you're not worried about you want, you're worried about well, yeah having an accident and being able to stop your trailer then and you know how much fuel economy you're getting yeah and this is actually getting pretty good for the size of the load yeah. according to the computer but yeah that's it's yeah, and you're not going to expect a gas engine pulling a trailer to get you know great fuel mileage that's just like the that. worst kind of fuel mileage there is is a gas engine pulling a trailer yeah diesels don't drop so far weight or pressure on the back axle of this Tacoma. But next month I got a Wrangler coming and I've got a Armada coming, I think. And I've got uh, a Honda Ridgeline next week. For all you guys that like the Honda controversy, I like the Honda Ridgeline. People, you know, think it's not a truck. Well, it's it's what people ever want it to be, if that, whatever they're using it for. It's just like the new Ford Maverick. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, Maverick is thing. somewhere yeah. Unibody, front wheel drive, or four wheel drive, all wheel drive. I think all the Honda Ridge lines are all wheel drive. And I got a surprise coming about the Maverick here this fall, so that'll be fun. But anyway, yes. So, you know, people love their brands, but, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with the Honda Ridge line. It just serves a different purpose. It's not for all and gooseneck's, it's not for climbing rocks. But it has it has a reason to be yeah, kind of like the gentleman farmer it's a gentleman's pickup yeah it's one of them city slicker trucks yeah there you go <laughs> well cool today we've had good luck with the cameras all not overheating in the glass so that's good ah oh, i have trouble with these gopros and i've got a, a nine and eight and a seven we lost the seven last week so i'm trying to find a new one a new seven uh, we saw the toolbox. We talked about the ECT and throttle mapping and shift points and all that and the torque converter lockup, just kind of like tow haul motor and everybody else. Let's see, this says if you want to go off roading with it, it's got decent tires. You got the Kevlar in them, the Wranglers. Uh, but you got 9.4 inches of clearance, approaches 29 degrees. Your departure is 23.5 degrees angle, 21 inch breakover. 21 gallon tank if you want to know how far it'll go it's got the uh the railing around the outside with the adjustable d clamps or the d hooks which i've always liked it's got 18 inch trd wheels and tires it's got dual zone i'll show you pictures of that or that's near we all know what that is limited slip axle six speed projector beam headlights and does have a five beam inside crash the rest are all four stars from the government and let's see we talked about the engine it's four-wheel drive part-time four-wheel drive system two-speed transfer case uh, electronically controlled automatic limited slip as we talked about twin receiver hitch it's got the oil cooler it says on now when I looked up it's actually got a transmission cooler too which is good since that seems to be the trend, is everybody going away from that? But I think you need all the cooling you can for a transmission that's towing trailers and working. Uh, of course, this has the dynamic radar cruise control, which is adaptive cruise control. And lane departure, all that. Automatic high beams. It's got a few options. It's got a power rear window. Um, I like the seats. It's really similar to what was in the 4Runner. These will last a long time. They wear really well. 8 inch touch screen, touch screen in the middle there. Looks like six speakers. A few UPS media ports, charge ports. Um, yeah, let's see. It's got parking sonar, so the thing beeps at you. Dynamic navigation. This is the Trail Edition. That got $1,775. What this is a Tacoma SR5 Trail Edition 4x4 double cab. Uh, black badging, limited style grill, unique fabric seats. I like the seats. Tan stitching, by golly, it is. You got a contrast between black and tan, then. It's got a technology package, which is the blind spot monitor. It's rear cross traffic alert. Ah, uh, carpet floor. 
door edge guard and this is a cement color looks like the door edge guard that plastic piece is very good I like to use them and the same color as the uh, cement truck it's got the wheel locks the tailgate emblem so thanks for watching Ken with Mr. Trek here with a really exciting trailer accessory you know trailer tires is a big deal you got problems especially 100 degree weather like we're having this year you know, you're going to blow tires, and the tires are going to blow, take out your fender, take out your clearance lights, and then you're going to sit there in the side road fixing your tire while your horses get hot. Sun coming down 100 degrees, no doors open, and no fan. It's horrible. And I see it happen all the time, and so I go to higher ply tires, and I go to Tucson Tire Pressure Monitoring System. they got so many options. You can go with bands on the Alcoa wheels, that's such a small hole. You can go with the tire pressure monitoring where you have a valve stem and the, re and the relay below it. The transmitter and then you can do the same transmitter on a band and now the new one I call them space balls but they're actually tire pressure monitoring from Tucson ball sensors like a ping pong ball rubber coated and you put this in your tire you, you crack open the bead throw it in there and it bounces around goes right for a little while and then once you get up to speed it just sticks to wherever it's at you know ahead of time what's going on this gives you special alerts before if the tire pressure is too high it goes off and beeps and flashes too low it beeps and flashes same way with heat and this will save you a lot of money you know price of a tire will pay for one of these puppies and why would you not want to know what's going on with the trader tires